Violin World, written by Tsar Yoshi. Chapter 633 Gang's All Here. Valet was still dripping as she furled her wings on the Immortal Dream's deck, thoughts swirling in her head. If talking with Kiro had been good for one thing, it was tearing her focus from Crystal. But now she had thoughts of future visions swirling in her head of mad monks and of power desired for unknown purposes. Kiro had been lying, she didn't trust Griffin with a single melon seed, but about how much? Her head felt like an anvil had been calmly placed inside, and her hoof knew better than her brain did how to get home and let her friends help. She stumbled her way down the stairs, making for the library and the cabins. She immediately drew to a halt when she saw who was there. Hello, chum! High Prince Gazelle waved lazily from a reading chair, Felicity and Celeste standing mildly at ease nearby. Fancy place you've got here! Much more amiable than the quarters I usually burrow at sea. Bear! Valet pointed a wing, not sure how much he cared. What are you doing here? Well, it's funny, Gazelle said, stretching luxuriously. There I was in Stormhoof, minding my own business and watching the proceedings after the tournament, when what should come along but a huge governmental catastrophe caused by sphinxes who are bad at scheming? So I thought to myself, hmm, this really would be a good time to skip town, since cleaning up after Stormhoof sounds like work I didn't ask for. And who should I run into but my favorite Iron Rich heroes? He winked. I did you a solid in the tournament, remember? Getting you that private box? Figured you could repay the favor by giving me and my friends a place to lie low for a bit. What do you say? Well, he rubbed a soggy ear, a little water squirting out from the pressure. Eh, really? No, Gazelle shrugged broadly, spreading his forelegs and shaking his head. Do I look like the kind of pony to stick around when there's trouble to you? Overly winced. I mean, isn't that basically your thing? Look, I've had a bad idea, so as long as you don't mess us up, I just want to go dry off. Ooh, harsh, but true, Gazelle admitted. But this is the kind of mess I run away from rather than laugh with impunity while standing directly out of range. You understand, right, old chum? Uh, Valet glanced behind him at Senesei and Felicity, wondering what they were doing this close to the prince and where Felicity had come from in the first place. You know what? Knock yourselves out. Just don't do anything spooky, okay? Gazelle let her pass with a wide bow, but she wasn't quite out of earshot before he said, Huh, I expected something feistier. I can still hear you, you know, Valet remarked backwards, not looking over her shoulder. She considered trying her friend's cabins, but Shine Spark would barely have her voice back. Soft snores emanated from Gerardo's room, and at the smell of food drifting from below, she guessed she knew where Maple was. Jam Jars' room had soft voices drifting from it. Um, Starlight? Maybe Amber would be around? She turned to walk back to Maple's room and found herself face to face with Felicity. Something bothering you, darling? Felicity tilted her head, keeping a respectful distance. No, nope, just looking for my friends, Valet lied. So, what are you doing here? With the prince dude? <laughs> Felicity chuckled airily. Tell me you wouldn't take the chance to travel with royalty, if all for the same. Ah, uh -huh. Valet slowly nodded, feeling very uncomfortable. She needed to find her friends, not come home to a bunch of partial strangers. You know... That wasn't really an answer. Felicity regarded her sadly for a moment, then reached out and tapped her with a quick, subtle hoof. Immediately, some of the tension and pressure in Valet's chest lessened, and her head felt a little more clear. Better? Valet blinked at herself, lifting a hoof and turning in a circle. Oh, what? I mean, wait, hold on, what do you do? A little trick I'm fond of that helps to clear the mind, Felicity replied with a smile. Were you there when I was explaining my alternate uses for Mistvale Arts? I can't remember. You look to wait on, darling. Yeah, well, I'm also soaked, Lily mumbled. So, unless you can conjure a towel. 
She deliberately didn't point out that Felicity hadn't answered a question and deliberately didn't ask again. Instead, she pushed open a random room that didn't have an occupant, stepped to its freshly stocked shelves, and gathered some linens, rubbing down first her face and then tying off her mane and tail. You're not very difficult to read, Felicity murmured from the door. Back when we had our first meeting, I told you my sisters and I were more than ordinary mares, you know. We did offer to tell you everything, and you expressly told us you wanted no part of any skullduggery we partook in. So please don't mistake my dodging about the prince for hostility. Oh, uh, thanks, uh, Valet continued drying herself. No matter how good Felicity's intentions were, even after whatever magic she had used, she still wanted nothing more than to talk to her friends. Look, if you want to help, could you go get, like, anyone? Sorry, not really in a mood for chit-chat right now. How broad of anyone, darling? Any specific person you have in mind? Uh, Felicity smiled. Most of your friends are about here and there, and we flew in on Wallace's airship, so he and his team are somewhere too. Uh, Valet waved a hoff. Yeah, maybe later. Look, like... She trailed off. Who did she want? Shrinespeck and Maple would both be hard to talk about Crystal with, both for different reasons. Gerardo might be intellectually helpful, but she didn't really feel like it. Her next best friend was... The door across the one she had chosen cracked open and Jam Jar strolled out, all the contentment in the world on her face. That turned to a frown as she spotted Valet, Starlight standing behind her. Oh, this room is being used now? Did you want it? Valet slowly looked up, returning the frown. Listen, I just need towels. Reading the situation in a heartbeat, Felicity was suddenly at Jam Jar's door peering through. Oh, you two are fans of the Firefly Sisters too? Something seemed to break in Jam Jar's mind, watching Felicity staring into her room and beaming, and her head ticked a little, mouth cracked open. With a very fluid motion, time seemed to unpause for her, and she pushed Starlight out while grabbing Felicity's mane and tugging her into the room. If you think the collection I have on display is impressive... Starlight stumbled, narrowly avoiding a face plan, then looked back at the closed door. Does she have any idea what she's getting into? Meets me, Felicity sighed. Look, I'm not really up to processing things that are going on right now. Maybe she was trying to leave me alone or something. Are you alright? Starlight frowned, entering the empty room. Get the door, and... Nah. Valet looked away. Look, you up! Uh... <sighs> Bananas, why can't the airship just be ours for a moment? Did they really have to choose right now to visit? I really need... Bananas. Starlight walked up beside her, offering another towel. Something to do with why you're so wet? I'm wet because I jumped in the fountain to try to clear my mind, Valet groaned. Listen, I... I don't even know where to start. I found out a million different things, got shoved for a billion more... And maybe accidentally did some stuff, but I'm not actually sure. Okay then, Starlight straightened up, taking charge. I don't know what's going on, but did you find out anything that puts us in danger? Vili hesitated. I, uh, well, since we're not in danger yet, I don't think this changes anything. Good, Starlight nodded. Next question. Do you need a hug? It's what Maple would offer. Valet blinked. Ah, uh, she glanced down at her soaked fur. Maybe in a few more minutes? Man, I don't know where to start either, Starlight sighed. At the beginning? I guess? I mean, uh, Valet cut herself off, swallowing. That would mean talking about Crystal. But not talking about Crystal would mean talking about Kiro and how... Hey, Starlight, she blurted. Have you ever heard of, uh, of a pony who can see the future? Huh? A Starlight tilted her head, leaning in to catch the words as Valet lowered the volume. Who can see the future? You mean like you dodging attacks with your cutie mark? She whispered back. Bananas, Valet sighed, ceasing her toweling and slumping down on the floor. I guess it's really that obvious. I found out that Chauncey, with his whole Moonglass Falls thing, is apparently searching for a cutie mark that can do that. And that's why Kira and his goons attacked me in Iron Ridge. Starlight's eyes widened slightly. What? 
That doesn't make sense. Why would they wait so long to go after you? They knew you were there all the time, didn't they? With your cutie marker secret? Not really. Evelie kicked a restless hoof, wishing she could slump lower than the floor. I mean, I kind of bragged about it all the time. Apparently, it was because they were too scared of me to do anything before, but thought that was their last chance. Starlight hesitated for a long moment. So, Chauncey wants a pony who can see the future? Or a cutie mark? Or... It's me. Starlight's voice got low. Because I can do that too, remember? Evely stiffened. Wait, you can? Like my special danger sense, or... We talked about it in the hospital, remember? Starlight whispered. You told me you had seen a vision while we were by Stanza and Gyre. Something about falling snow when you dying. And I told you I'd seen the same thing a long time ago, but we decided to talk about it later. But if that's the same thing, and you saw yours with a cutie mark that predicts the future... <sighs> great. Whatever the stock was supposed to be doing, Valise's heart was suddenly even more filled with tension. Yeah, well... Uh, she looked frantically for a way out, where her brain was probably moving at 10% of its usual speed. That might not have been my cutie mark. Look, I don't want to find out what this means. Starlight hesitated. Your cutie mark was almost glowing while we were down there. I don't know. Just stop, Valise whispered, frozen. Look like... Sorry, I just picked a fight with someone I knew would be nasty and I'm really not comfortable with how it went down and then got stuff in another conspiracy movie machine before I could even get a minute to clear my head. I just gotta... gotta do something. Bananas, my head feels like a real mess right now. Yell into a pillow, Starlight offered, floating one ear. Thanks. Valet took it, planted it between her face and the floor, and was silent. Are you going to use that? Uh, Starlight tilted her head. Hey, kiddo. Valet's voice was muffled by the pillow. Apparently Wallace is around. I think I need to punch something, so see if you wouldn't mind. Also, see if you can show away that prince and the bad ponies, and maybe see if Iron Flanks wants to take a break from cooking while you're at it. Think any of that's reasonable? Starlight swallowed, then nodded. I'll do it, she promised, leaving with a pattering of little hooves. End of chapter 633